and then we're going to talk about like what. Oh, hey there. This is Dr. Evan Osar here with my good friend and colleague Bucky. We're going to talk about glutes because if you have, if you have clients that are trying to recuperate from hip surgery, they're going or they're coming out of hip surgery or they're trying to avoid hip surgery. Obviously, the glutes are so important. So thank you for joining me today as we discuss the glutes. Actually, I'll be discussing the glutes at this year's Functional Aging Summit in Denver. Super excited to be joining our friends, Dr. Dan Ritchie, Dr. Cody Seip, and my colleague, Diane. Janice and I, are, we love these people. We love this community. We love you guys that follow Functional Aging Institute, and we can't wait to be back to live events this year. We missed last year being live, but we're super excited about this year's event. Now, if we look at the glutes, sorry, buddy, we got to take a look at your backside here. Obviously, there's three different glute muscles. We, we have the glute minimus that comes off the backside or the side of the pelvis here, coming down to the greater trochanter. The glute medius comes from this fossa here. You can kind of see this area right here, and that also comes to the greater trochanter. We're going to focus on glute max in this video. We'll talk more glute medius and glute minimus, minimus in a future edition. So the glute maximus has quite a variety of attachments on the back of the side of the pelvis. It actually fascially blends to the gluteus medius, and then it also attaches to this, the crest, right below the crest of the innominate bone, or, or the side of the pelvis. It also has fibers that blend into and attach to the sacrum, so that lateral edge of the sacrum here as well. And it also has the lower fibers actually attached from the coccyx as well. Now, it has several insertions as well. Let me just back up one more time. It also has fascial attachments that allows it to connect to the opposite lat. So it, it crosses, I should say, it attaches to the thoracolumbar fascia and it attaches to the opposite side lat. So that's what allows us to sort of wind up and use that elastic energy of these myofascial chains, that posterior myofascial chain, to help increase efficiency when we're walking and or if we're throwing something and we're winding up to help accelerate the ball or our body if we're walking or running fast. Now, there's two distinct insertions of the glutes, and this is very important to understand because people think like, oh, the glutes just do this one thing, or I should say hip extension and, and, and have some other functions, but they don't. They forget about the fact that there's actually, or don't realize that there's actually a superficial part of the glute max. There's also a deeper section of the glutes as well. The superficial max, superficial max, <laughs> the superficial glute max will attach to the IT band. So if you put your hand on your glute, it basically runs, that's your superficial glutes, it runs down to the IT band, which then runs down the outside of the leg to insert into Gertie's tubercle, which is sort of right about here on the tibia. So that's why it can also have an effect on the rotation of the tibia. It will also help to control single leg stance, and it's a key muscle, we often think about the gluteus medius in single leg stance and pelvic stability, but the glute max is also a very important part of single leg stability and knee stability. Now the deeper fibers of glute max, so more of the fibers that come off the sacrum and the coccyx, they actually go to the back side of the femur and insert into, this is, sorry Bucky, not a real femur, so you don't really see it here too well, but somewhere right around here, right behind the greater trochanter, there's a gluteal tuberosity. And that's where the, glute, the deeper fibers of the glute max will insert into. Now, they have very different functions. The superficial fibers of glute max, they'll do most of your hip. Got a little bit of a stiff hip. He needs a little bit of mo mobility work, which we'll talk about here in a moment. The glute, the superficial fibers will do a lot of the extensions because they're, they've got a long lever arm pulling off that iliotibial band, so they can do extension, and they'll also do some external rotation because of the, the fiber orientation of those fibers. They can also do a little bit of hip abduction, but that's not really what they do, because again, think about everyday life. There's not a whole lot of time in life where, where we're doing a lot of abduction, but they can help stop some of the adduction that happens to our pelvis if our pelvis is moving this direction, so it can help decelerate and control some of that motion. Now, what do the deeper fibers do? One of the things that we discussed here in these Facebook Lives is there's a very different function of the deeper muscles, the muscles that are closer to the joint. So when you think about the muscles that are closer to the joint, so like your deep external hip rotators, the obturators, the gemelli, as well as these deeper fibers of glute max, what they actually do is they're closer to the axis of rotation, which means they're just closer to the joint. So they have more proprioceptive proprioception. 
so they have more proprioceptive ability and send more signals back to the central nervous system about position, loading, movement of that joint. Well, what it also does, it actually has an ability to sort of hold the ball, the femoral head, back in the acetabulum. So it actually works. The, the deeper fibers of glute max actually work with the psoas, obviously running up the other side of the spine and attaching to the lesser trochanter. It's working with the psoas to essentially, psoas is pulling from the front. These deeper fibers of glute max are pulling from behind, and it helps to centrate or keep the ball centered in the socket. Now, the more superficial fibers of glute max, they obviously help stabilize as well. Well, if they overpower those deeper fibers and the deeper fibers of the hip complex, well, then what happens is then we start to drive that femoral head forward. And that's one of the common causes of hip problems. Because unfortunately, many of us, you and I both, have been taught that the better to better activate the glutes, we need to do a lot of glute squeezing and really squeeze like we're squeezing a million dollars between our cheeks. Real quick note, if you got a million dollars, don't hide them between your cheeks. <laughs> lost my train of thought there <laughs> so what happens though is the more that we start squeezing those superficial glutes obviously we're squeezing some of the you know over contracting some of the, the deeper fibers as well we'll start to change the alignment of the pelvis and if you can do this is just put your hands on your pelvis and your pelvis and lumbar spine do a squat and come up and squeeze and what you'll do is you'll go into immediate posterior pelvic tilt and lumbar spine flexion when you think about that you're like okay so what well, that's, if we're doing heavy load or fast loading, it's probably not the position we want to load in. When we come out of a squat or deadlift, we want to come up, activate the glutes for sure, but keep them in a more neutral position so that ball stays centered in the socket, the lumbar spine stays centered, not drive that pelvis under, where now we're changing the alignment. And you can feel this on yourself. So put your hand behind your greater trochanter. So put your fingers behind that bone on the outside of your hip. Put your thumb in the front side of your pelvis, so sort of right here. Now come into your squat, come up and squeeze. And what, what are you gonna feel? Or what do you feel, I should say? You start to feel that femoral head driving forward. And if we look at the wear and tear pattern of osteoarthritis, osteoarthritis mostly happens on the superior and anterior portion of the femoral head. Why does it happen so much in those two specific regions? Because when you start to drive that femoral head up into the, into the acetabulum and forward, you start to get more of that wear and tear on those two points. Rarely, not never, but rarely do you get degenerative changes, the same level of degenerative changes on the backside of the hip. Why is that? Because most of us and most of your older clients, when you look at them, they have no glutes because they've been tucked under, they've been squeezing their glutes for so long and they've been so, in so much posterior pelvic tilt from sitting and from spinal stenosis that they're, that they all they can do to use their glutes appropriately is to squeeze and, and drive that femoral head forward. And that's what leads to many of these degenerative changes that we see in our clients that lead them to cartilage issues, labral issues. So we, we have so many patients that are going for labral surgeries now, because again, lots of our younger clients now are doing high intense exercises and learning the same strat strategies that you and I are learning. And then we see this very similar pattern as our clients get more unstable, as they get less pelvic stability, as they get more uncomfortable in their hip, when they're walking, they'll start to grip down even further. So that's what happens and drives your clients to surgery. So now what can you and I do about it? Now, if your client has to have surgery, many of our clients need surgery, then let's get them prepared for surgery. If, our, if we know our clients are going for surgery, I want them going in there as strong as possible. So one of the things we want to do, obviously, is prepare our clients for surgery. And if they're coming out of rehab, so now your clients are leaving rehab. And re remember, the goal of rehab is just to make sure your clients can get around everyday life and function, not function well, just function enough to not fall, not injure themselves, and do the basic activities of, of everyday life. It's up to you and I to help our client move from that post-rehab sort of position into performing at a level so they can get back to what they need to, want to, and ultimately love to do. And many of our clients want to perform at a high level, so we need to create strategies for them as well. So first thing we're going to do is assess our client. We want to see what our client's hip rotation is, because that gives you a sense of how well they're actually moving the pelvis over top the femoral head. Now, you could do a forward bend, which we will do as part of our assessment process. It's just very hard to, I should say hard. It, there's some things to look at and consider. So, so let's look at rotation. Rotation is just easier to see. 
and help you determine. So just have your client stand with their feet underneath their pelvis. Hands on the pelvis, have them rotate to one direction, come back to center. Rotate the other direction, come back to center. You can do this with me, get a sense of which side may be a bit more limited. So for me, right side, no problem, feels free, feel, feels open. Left side, definitely a bit more limited on my left side. My left leg tends to turn out a bit more on that side as well. I have a bit more challenge stabilizing on my left side compared to my right side. So just a simple, easy screen you can do for your clients. Look at standing pelvic rotation, and you can also compare it to lying rotation as well. And usually, usually they match up. If you have limited rotation this direction, internal rotation standing up, you're going to have limited internal rotation on that left side when your client is lying down. Now, normally what we do is we would take, hang on just a second, we're, we're going to take our myofascial release tool. We use the Rolga here in our office. We love this Rolga from our friends over at Rolga, Rusty and Dana. Turn us on to the Rolga. And again, we're going to release some of this gripping and overactivity of the posterior hip complex. So we're going to put the Rolga, we're going to use one of these zones. So zone one is right here, zone two is here, three, four right there. We're going to use somewhere around zone two here. We're going to get right back in the glutes. So if our client can, can, client can get client can get down on the floor, we're going to have them down on the floor. But if our client can't get on the floor, because again, many of our older clients cannot, or where they're so awkward once they get down on the floor or sit on a foam roll, we can also use it against the wall. So again, we're going to place it here in the back side of the hip. We're going to lean up against the wall. I'll put more weight on my right side, and now I can just sort of lean my body and push in and do some myofascial release. And I'll just kind of maneuver this Rolga here and lean into it. And I'm using my right leg to push my body weight into the roller. So again, what I don't do is have my client go like this because they're a little awkward sometimes and they, they can roll off of it. So just have them have one you know, go on their side. They don't need to crush it. They just need to get a little bit of myofascial release. So we'll just do a little bit of breathing into that left side as well. So the tighter of the two sides breathe into that side as well, because oftentimes your client isn't breathing into the side where they're more tight. When I say breathing, they're not breathing down towards their pelvis because the pelvic floor, obviously, as we know, moves as you breathe. The pelvis, some of the, the deep external hip rotators actually attach into the hip rotators. So the more we can breathe down towards the pelvic floor, we can actually get hip release from breathing as well. So just a couple more seconds here of, of release, and there we go. Now, now we want to also use our corrective exercise patterns to improve hip rotation. So I'm going to turn around. I'm going to use a supported squat, split squat position, focusing on the tighter of my two sides. So hands go against the wall. I'm going to go long spine. Always set your client up for success. So long spine, stack the thoracopelvic cylinder, then hinge. Hands on the wall. Now I'm going to step back with my right leg, making sure my pelvis stays level. I'm going to go breathe in as I breathe out. I'm going to lower into my split squat position. My goal is to just relax and let the sit bones go wide so I can relax the posterior hip complex and work on that eccentric lengthening. Eccentric lengthening is sort of the same thing, but it's an eccentric contraction. I'm focusing on lengthening through that posterior hip complex because, again, when your clients are so tucked under, when they've been gripping for so long, it's the eccentric phase of the exercise pattern we need to focus our clients more on. More on more on the eccentric phase of the exercise pattern. Breathe in to come up, breathe out, and then hinge. Breathe in to come back up, breathe out to hinge and sit back. Just focusing on spreading those sit bones and relaxing through that posterior hip, okay? Little bit, little bit of myofascial release, little bit of breathing, little bit of split squat. Let's go back and check our range of motion. So hips are underneath the pelvis again. Hands on the pelvis. Check right rotation. Actually, right, right rotation feels better, even though I didn't technically do anything on my right side. Left rotation, way better now. Just freer and more like what it is on my right side. So just that little bit of myofascial release, breathing, and split stance position, split, split squat position, changed my range of motion. Now we, we want to use it in a functional position. So one of the patterns we love the most to use with our clients is a hip hinge, split stance hip hinge deadlift. So I'm going to use a dumbbell. It's really the same idea. Okay. Actually, let me put this down. So we're going to set our clients up for success. Align, stack the rib cage, hinge. So the first thing I do is hinge, then I grab the weight. So that way I know at least I'm set up in the optimal alignment. 
I'm gonna place my hand on my pelvis. I'm gonna hinge, focusing on releasing through the backside of the hip, that eccentric lengthening, and then breathe in to come up. Breathe out, breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. And again, you can use traditional breathing, but you can also facilitate their breathing so that way they're breathing in as they extend, breathing out to facilitate letting go and lengthening through the posterior hip complex, okay? Now, when you've done a set, go back and check your range of motion because the range of motion should be the same as before your pattern. Because if you change your alignment, your breathing, or your control in a suboptimal manner, your nervous system will decrease the range of motion. So let's go back. Again, it was only five reps, but let's just go back and check range of motion. So I didn't do the right side, so it still feels good. Left side actually feels better. So even my range of motion feels even easier this time. So that way you marry the alignment, breathing, and control you use during your corrective exercise into your functional exercise patterns. And that's how you help your clients. Whether you're trying to set them up for success when they go into surgery or set them up to go into their surgery in a more effective manner, come out of rehab, so, so now you're working with them post-rehab, you help start to move them back to some of their functional goals and you start to move them towards performance. Because again, it's just the same process we take our clients through regardless of, the, of where they're at in their process. The only thing that changes is how intensely we can progress them, how fast we can pro progress them, and the exercise patterns, the level of intensity of the exercise patterns. So I hope that made sense to you. I hope you, get, you were able to see the process. You figure out what your client needs through the assessment. Obviously, you'd be doing a bit more assessment than we did here. You use your corrective exercise, your mild faster release, your corrective exercise patterns to help restore more optimal alignment, breathing, and control. Then you take that more optimal strategy into your functional exercise patterns. So now you're developing the strength, stability, the endurance, all those functional outcomes that you're, tra you're training in your clients so that they safely and successfully and progressively move towards accomplishing their health and fitness goals. And that's how you become an in-demand fitness professional. That's how you differentiate yourselves from all the other nonsense that's out there with people just trying to crush people and showing how crazy their exercises are. You use a strategic process, systematic process to help your clients progress from where they are to where they want to get to. So again, super excited. Come on back over here. Super excited to be joining our friends Dr. Dan Ritchie and Dr. Cody Seif at this year's Functional Aging Summit, where I'll be sharing more strategies for improving hip function. Whether your client is going into surgery, if they're trying to avoid surgery, and or recuperating from surgery. Janice will be speaking about all things breathing and how to use breath to improve. As I mentioned, breath is a big part of improving hip mobility as well as low back mobility. And then I'll be joining my great friend and colleague, uh, just all around wonderful individual, Diane Bailey. Diane and I will be showing how to use the same approach to improving rotation and walking. And obviously, you know Diane from Open the, the Door to Tai Chi. So we'll be blending our concepts on how do you take this information and blend it into posture, rotation, and walking. So super excited to join her as well. This is going to be a great event. It's one, it's it's really a, one of our favorite events, if not favorite event, because it, it there's just a bunch, a bunch, a lot of like-minded individuals just like you and I that work and train mostly the older population. And it's just a, a lot of people that just come together to make ourselves better, to support each other. There's not the egos. It's just people looking to support, empower, educate, and make each other better. You know, some of my best friends in the industry come through the Functional Aging Summit. Jackie Bachmeyer, I, I met her there. Dr. Dan Ritchie and Cody Seip, met them there, obviously. Um, Robert Linkle, met him there for the first time as well. So Diane Bailey, met her through the Functional Aging uh, Institute as well. So some of our best friends in the industry have come through the Functional Aging Institute. Institute and we met at, for the first time at the Functional Aging Summit. So it's really an amazing opportunity, an amazing event to come together, especially now after we have, we've we've been away for two, two years at least, maybe it's more than that right now, maybe we're going on, this, this is the third year that we haven't been in live events. This is an opportunity to come together, to get empowered, to get your, your juices refilled, so to speak, your battery refilled, to connect with some really awesome and amazing people doing great things in the industry and making their lives of so many, transforming the lives of so many people. So look forward to seeing you. The link is below this video to enroll. And when you use our link, we got a special gift for you. When you use our link to enroll, we're gonna send you right away. Just send Tanya, Tanya will get you sent out 
We're going to, send, we're going to give you a four-part series, maybe it's three, three or four-part series on the hip anatomy. Jill and I did an anatomy section on the hip. We covered all the hip muscles or most of the hip muscles. We showed you how to uh, where they are. So very similar to what we did with the glutes here, a little bit more in depth than that. We will take you through the functional assessments, the corrective exercises, the best corrective corrective exercises, the releases, the activation patterns for improving glute function, for improving hip function, and then how to use it in functional exercise patterns. So we're going to send you that as a bonus. So use our link, register as soon as we get your enrollment, send us a screenshot that you paid through our link, or actually let us know that, and send us the screenshot of that, and we'll send you out, we'll get, we'll get you connected immediately with a copy of this, so you can start learning already, use this information, and then when you're ready to roll once you get to the Functional Aging Summit. So, thanks so much. I know that was a lot. Thanks for hanging with me. Thanks for all you do in the industry. Thanks for being part of our community and allowing us to be part of your community. Make it a great day. If you have any questions, put them below this video, and I'll answer them and get back to you. And again, look forward to seeing you at this year's Functional Aging Summit in June. Link is below the video or above, wherever you're watching this, and we look forward to seeing you there. Take care. Have a great day.